Hello and welcome to Loppy Loves. On this channel I talk about my life as an immigrant living in Iceland. So if you have watched any of my recent videos you will probably know that I had my driving test recently. It was 10 days ago today in fact. And in today's video I wanted to talk about the process of learning to drive in Iceland because it might be beneficial for any other immigrants living here who are considering doing their driving test. Now it did take me almost two years um, in Iceland to pass my driving test for various reasons which I won't go into in this video. And the process can seem quite complicated so I'm going to try my best to explain it in this video. I did my lessons with a driving instructor here in Selfoss called Elin. She is a teacher in the capital area I think and also in South Iceland up to postcode uh, 845 I think. I will put the link to her website in the description down below because she is a brilliant teacher and I couldn't recommend her enough. And she also has a YouTube channel which explains some of the things you need to learn during your driving lessons. I will link her channel as well. She also has a great video about roundabouts in Iceland, which even if you don't live here and you're just visiting as a tourist, you should definitely watch that video because roundabouts here are a bit different from other countries. Well, at least different from the UK. I'm not sure about everywhere else. The first thing to mention is that if you wear glasses or contact lenses like myself, you need to go to a doctor and get a doctor's note. The doctor will do a quick evaluation. It's like a mini eye test and you will pay for the doctor's appointment and I think you also pay for the note. Can't remember but I'm pretty sure. It wasn't expensive but I think I paid for it. This seemed weird to me and in the UK you just get into the car on your first lesson and your instructor will just point out a license plate several meters away and ask you to read it and then if you if you can read it you're okay to drive but here you need proof that you can see with your glasses which seems a little bit backwards to me. It should be the other way around. I think like if you don't wear glasses, you should have to prove it. But anyway, so if you wear glasses, go to the doctors and get your doctor's note. To start, you don't have to apply for a provisional license like we do in the UK. You just book a lesson with a teacher and in the first lesson, they will give you a driving book like this. I'm just covering up my personal information. And you go to Sisla Matherin which is the magistrate's office in your local town and you fill out an application form and you have to take a passport photo. I can't remember if it's one or two photos, it might be two. And then that's your provisional license. You don't get a card, you just, you just have the driving book and that's all you really need. Eileen actually gave me this timeline right at the beginning of how the driving lessons go and as you can see there's a lot of steps it's a lot more complicated than in the UK so I will just talk through them quickly in Iceland you have to do a minimum of 15 lessons I only took 15 lessons but it was spread out over two years you can do it a lot quicker like I said there was reasons that I didn't complete sooner so after you've done your first lesson you can register for the first driving school I registered with Airkit which is an online driving school and I chose that one because it was the cheapest and I didn't have to buy the theory book there was a free ebook that came with the course I wouldn't necessarily recommend that school the ebook that came with the course only related to the questions in the course it wasn't like a whole theory book like I thought it would be and with the driving school I think there's six or seven like mini courses that you do and after 24 hours you unlock a test for that mini section of the course I guess you have to pass that test to move on if you just did it straight like day after day I think it would take about a week you get a month to pass from what I remember but this was back in 2020 so maybe maybe it changed and you can carry on with your driving lessons while you're doing the course uh, I think the results of every test that you do like at the end of every section I think the results get sent back to your driving instructor so that they can monitor your progress then after a few more lessons and after you finish the first driving school you do the second driving school which is another theory school with little courses and tests that you do 
Um, I went with Neto Cascoli for that one, which is I think the main provider. It seems like the biggest one in Iceland anyway. And I did begrudgingly choose to pay for the theory book, which was not very cheap. But this is the book in English, it's called Driving in Iceland. I bought like the newest, I bought a new copy, which was the 2018 edition. And not long after I bought it, they released an even newer copy. <laughs> So I'm not sure if the 2021 edition is uh, much different from this. I can't imagine it is, honestly. You can normally find them on Facebook. People are selling them secondhand. So if you can, get one secondhand because it will be a lot cheaper. But I, I could never find one. Someone else always beat me to it whenever there was a listing. <laughs> then you will do a few more driving lessons, finish that course, and you can register for the third driving school which is an in-person driving school in Hapnafjörður in the capital region. And I found that a little bit traumatising. <laughs> so many people told me that it was going to be so fun. You have two halves of the lesson, so I can't remember how many hours the day is. It depends what group you're in, so you get put into two groups. Uh, one will go out onto the track first and the other will go into the classroom first and then you switch halfway through. So I went onto the track first and we were split into little groups, so there was three people in a car. We take it in turns to drive around this like racetrack um, and the car is a modified car that can be put into skids. <laughs> and it's practice for even the winter if you skid on the ice and the car goes into a spin, you know how to get out of that situation. Now that part I found useful and I think it is necessary for people learning to drive in Iceland. But in the classroom, we did a few other activities. Um, one of them was getting into a car that is like on a kind of rotisserie and flips over multiple times. Like the, the instructor can control how many times it flips. I found that traumatizing. I absolutely hated it. I was screaming my head off when the car was rolling. I was the only person in my group who was screaming, but a lot of people did not find that very fun. Um, and I just found it completely unnecessary. Like, why Why do we need to know what that feels like to be in a flip? If anything, that just put me off driving. Like, I didn't do my test or another lesson for a year after that. I did go out driving to do some practice driving, but it was just traumatizing to me. After you have done 10 lessons, you can do your practice driving, which is when you go back to Sislamathrin and register the details of someone who has been driving I think for more than five years and is over the age of 25 I think might be 24 and you can go practice driving with them one important thing to note is that whoever you do your practice driving with is not allowed to charge you for the practice driving obviously if you're using someone else's car someone else's petrol I think it's okay to pay for the petrol that you use while driving with them but they cannot charge you for their time so don't let anyone trick you into paying them for the practice driving. When you have finished with the third driving school, you can take your theory test. I only took mine about a month ago. It was just a few weeks before I did the practical test. I found it very difficult to revise for the theory, which is one of the reasons it took me so long to do the actual test. I personally didn't find this book very helpful at all. Um, I find it really difficult to revise from things like this and it just there is a lot of information here but it's just very difficult for me to study from it so I think that's just my own personal problem honestly but some of the English in here is not very good it's not very well written and I didn't learn that much from it unfortunately because it wasn't that cheap either I can't remember the price but I was shocked at how expensive this book was I did do my theory test in the UK 11 years ago when I was 17. I never did my practical test. But I remember I did not revise for the theory test at all until the night before I had the test. I stayed up until midnight and I had a Nintendo DS game. Um, and I went into the test and got 94% the next day, or 96% even, the next day. And I wish there was something like that in Iceland, like a little game that you could play. But fortunately we do have something else. We have these driving books. 
which I did buy and I was revising from them for months. A few weeks before the theory test my instructor did send me the PDF version of it for free which I wish I had thought to ask her because I did pay for these but they are very cheap. They're much cheaper than the book and I think I learn a lot more from these than the book and it's just in the style of multiple choice questions like little practice tests and you just choose, I don't know if it's going to zoom in, you just choose what answer and there is a little answer sheet that goes with it. One thing I will say about these is that so many people told me to get the books because that they are exactly the same as the theory test, like the same questions, the same exams. That's not true anymore. I think it used to be true from the science of it, but it's not true anymore because I went into my theory feeling super confident because I was doing so well on these practice tests every time I took them. I opened the book and it was nothing like the practice tests. It was in the same layout with like multiple choice questions. How the theory test is, is that you have two parts. There are 15 questions in part A and 15 questions in part B. You are allowed to get two wrong marks in part A and seven wrong marks overall. But it's, it's difficult to pass the theory and I've heard not a lot of people pass first time. Also the language in the theory test, some people told me to take it in Icelandic, I kind of think I might have done better uh, because the English one I did not understand it. It was so difficult to understand my native language because of the way it was written. There was one question in particular in part A that I just I read it and it didn't make any sense to me. And I left it out until the end, came back, went through the test again, still didn't understand it, just guessed an answer, went through the test one more time and luckily changed the answer because I wrote the answer that seemed most logical to me and then I remembered one of the questions from the practice test with the same sign that the question was asking about and there was an answer that was similar to the answer that it was in the practice test so I changed the answer at the last minute and thank god it did because I only just passed because I changed the answer. So that question was in part A. I ended up getting zero wrong marks in part A, which I would have got a wrong mark if I hadn't changed the answer. But I got seven wrong marks in part B, so I just scraped by, just passed it. And then the practical test was just, I think about three weeks, not even three weeks after I took the theory test. My instructor booked it in straight away. I had a few lessons before the theory test and that had been the first time I had done a lesson with my instructor in over a year. I just took such a long break for various reasons and I was not feeling that confident that I would pass the test and um, there was still a lot that I didn't feel super confident in driving but I got into the test. <laughs> At the beginning of the test there are some questions that you will be asked and there is a long list of questions that you have to kind of learn the answers for. You can be asked five questions and have to get three of them right. I was only asked three questions and got all three of them right, although the examiner did kind of help me a little bit to answer them. Then I went to pull out of my parking space and drive into the traffic. There was a lot of traffic so I had to wait two or three minutes for a gap. Went to drive and the car didn't move because I forgot to take the handbrake off, <laughs> which was a great start. So I released the handbrake, waited for another gap for another minute or two, finally found a gap and again the car didn't move because I forgot to pull it into first gear. <laughs> really bad start to the test. And then luckily on the third attempt I managed to get into the traffic. The driving went well up until like the last five minutes of the test. I had just left a roundabout and there was zebra crossing right after the roundabout and I was so focused on doing the roundabout properly that I didn't even pay attention or notice the crossing right after. I went straight through the crossing. There were two young kids, maybe eight years old, crossing the road, already on the crossing. I went straight past them. If it had been a few seconds later, it would have been disastrous. Um, and at that point I was like, okay, I have failed. That would definitely be a fail in the UK. The instructor led me back to the exam centre. There was no parking spaces so we just had to circle around and then came back to the exam centre and I thought that's it, failed. No way I have passed that test. But I did! Yeah! Somehow! 
Um, so the driving test is a lot easier than the theory test. You are allowed to get 10 marks, like 10 bad points on the driving test. I got 9, so again I very narrowly passed. But I have my driving licence. And I do have a piece of paper for a few weeks. I can use it for a month, I think. Um, which just has my photo on it and it's just like a certificate, I guess, to say like I've passed my driving test. If I go out driving, I have to have this piece of paper with me and some photo ID until my driving license card arrives, which should be in about three weeks. If it doesn't arrive, I will just go to Sisla Matherin and see what the holdup is. But I have my driving license after 11 years, which is super exciting. But however, it is a temporary driving license because nothing in Iceland can be that simple. <laughs> So this is, I guess, the closest thing to the, th to the provisional license that we have in England. So it is a driving license card, um, but it is valid for up to three years. And after 12 months or up to three years, if I have no points on my license, I can book a driving evaluation with my instructor or another instructor, but I will go with my instructor because she's great and you just drive around with the instructor and I think there's like a checklist or something that of things just to make sure that you're doing everything properly. You can't fail the evaluation apparently. After you have finished the evaluation then you can go and exchange your temporary license for a permanent license which is valid for 15 years. So yeah I have passed my driving test. I do have a driving license but it's not the full license I guess. But I can still drive by myself. I don't need to have an, an experienced driver in the car with me. I can go driving completely alone on the temporary license. Okay, so this video was longer than I was expecting it to be. Um, I hope I explained everything well. I'm not sure if I did. Um, and I hope that I can help someone who is wondering about what the process of learning to drive in Iceland is. Let me know in the comments below if it helped or if I just explained it in such a bad way that it is confusing to you. <laughs> Sorry if I did. Not so good at explaining things like this but I just wanted to make a video in case it could help someone. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Bye!